Welcome to the enigmatic world of Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca, a 1940 cinematic masterpiece that weaves mystery, romance, and psychological intrigue into a compelling narrative. Set against the backdrop of Manderley, a sprawling estate haunted by the memory of its former mistress, the film follows the gripping tale of a young woman thrust into a marriage shadowed by the lingering presence of Rebecca, the deceased first wife of the enigmatic Maxim de Winter. Anchored by stellar performances and a haunting atmosphere, this classic delves into themes of obsession, identity, and the power of the past. Were you captivated by the enigmatic allure of Laurence Olivier as Maxim de Winter, or the captivating presence of Joan Fontaine as the second Mrs. de Winter? Perhaps the supporting cast left an indelible mark on your cinematic memory. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to Rebecca? Whether it's a moment of suspense that kept you on the edge of your seat or how this film left an enduring impact on your perspective, we're eager to hear your stories and reflections in the comments below. Share your thoughts, memories, and experiences with us. Your voice adds depth to the cinematic tapestry of Rebecca. Join the conversation and let's celebrate this timeless classic together. Unlike the novel, Sir Alfred Hitchcock added a film projector sequence in the 1940 movie Rebecca. In this sequence, Maxim and the second Mrs. De Winter see their honeymoon days. This addition altered the storytelling from the original novel and offered a visual representation of their past, enhancing the cinematic experience. Hitchcock's creative decision aimed to bring a different dimension to the characters' relationship and history, utilizing the visual medium to capture their memories in a unique way. Despite the deviation from the source material, this inclusion became a memorable element of the film, contributing to its impact on audiences. David O. Selznick closely supervised the performances of the stars, Sir Lawrence Olivier and Joan Fontaine, in the 1940 movie Rebecca. He had specific concerns about their acting styles, directing Sir Alfred Hitchcock to adjust their performances. Selznick wanted Olivier's reactions to be quicker, and his line readings slower, even ensuring he understood the line's meanings. With Fontaine, he urged Hitchcock to push for a more expressive style, moving away from restraint towards a little more Yiddish art theater. This hands-on approach by Selznick significantly influenced the directorial decisions in shaping the film's performances, highlighting his dedication to achieving the desired on-screen chemistry and emotive depth. For the only time in his career, Sir Alfred Hitchcock found himself excluded from the scripting process of a film. This unique occurrence happened during the making of Rebecca. The decision left Hitchcock disallowed to partake in the script, leading to an unprecedented move of band producer David O. Selznick from the movie set. This clash between the renowned director and the influential producer marked a significant departure from Hitchcock's typical involvement in crafting his films. The rift, stemming from creative differences and control, became a defining aspect behind the scenes of this cinematic classic, shaping the dynamics between two giants in the industry. This exclusion reshaped the director's approach, reflecting an unexpected deviation in his directorial process for this particular movie. Selected Fact was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry in 2018 by the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. The 1940 film Rebecca earned its place in history. Recognized as a gem among cinematic treasures, it was inducted into the National Film Registry in 2018. This honor wasn't just about its captivating storyline or renowned director, Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Rather, it was a nod to the film's profound cultural, historical, and aesthetic impact. Rebecca transcended mere entertainment. Its narrative, characters, and cinematic execution resonated deeply with audiences, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of filmmaking. And during the test of time, Rebecca stood tall among countless productions, earning its distinction as a film that not only entertained but also enriched the cultural fabric. Its inclusion in the National Film Registry serves as a testament to its enduring relevance and contribution to the world of cinema, solidifying its place as a significant piece of cinematic history. The 1940 movie Rebecca, directed by Sir Alfred Hitchcock, holds a unique position in cinematic history. Notably, filming commenced merely five days after the UK entered World War II, presenting challenges for Hitchcock and the predominantly British cast. 
The backdrop of wartime uncertainty added a layer of complexity to the production, impacting the creative process. Despite the wartime constraints, Rebecca marked Hitchcock's inaugural venture into Hollywood and achieved the distinction of being his sole film to secure a Best Picture Oscar. An interesting twist, however, lies in the fact that although it claimed the top picture honor, Hitchcock lost the Best Director Award to John Ford for The Grapes of Wrath in 1940. Delving into the film's sonic dimension, an intriguing detail emerges. At specific intervals in the movie, notably around the 33rd, 49th, 44th, 48th, and 123rd minutes, an otherworldly presence graces the soundtrack Hammond Novacord. This early polyphonic synthesizer, a pioneer in its category, left an indelible mark on the film's auditory landscape. Its subsequent influence on the sound design of later science fiction and suspense genres showcases the lasting impact of this innovative inclusion in Rebecca. In essence, Rebecca's production amidst wartime challenges, Hitchcock's Hollywood debut, and the unconventional auditory feature of the Novacord collectively contribute to the film's multifaceted significance. These aspects, beyond the well-documented narrative and performances, deepen our understanding of the film's historical and artistic context. Over 20 actresses underwent screen tests for the pivotal role of Mrs. De Winter in the 1940 film Rebecca. The coveted part eventually landed in the hands of newcomer Joan Fontaine, beating out contenders such as Vivian Lee. Notably, Lee's then-partner, Sir Lawrence Olivier, advocated for her casting. This casting decision marked a crucial juncture in the film's production, as Fontaine's portrayal brought a unique depth to the character. The meticulous selection process extended beyond casting to the visual storytelling techniques employed by Sir Alfred Hitchcock and cinematographer George Barnes. In a pioneering move, they utilized deep-focus photography, a technique relatively rare at the time. This approach allowed for a comprehensive and immersive visual experience, a precursor to its more famous use in Citizen Kane. Hitchcock's prior use of this technique in When Boys Leave Home attested to his innovative and evolving directorial style. Delving into the character dynamics, Hitchcock's deliberate decision regarding Mrs. Danvers stands out. The enigmatic housekeeper is deliberately portrayed as almost ethereal, rarely seen walking but rather gliding. This unique perspective, framed solely from Joan Fontaine's character's anxious point of view, heightens the tension and reinforces the pervasive fear of Mrs. Danvers appearing unexpectedly. Hitchcock's meticulous attention to such details contributed to the psychological depth of the film. In conclusion, beyond the well-documented historical context and production challenges, the casting process and innovative visual techniques significantly shaped the 1940 movie Rebecca. The careful selection of Joan Fontaine and the groundbreaking use of deep-focus photography underscore the film's enduring impact on cinematic storytelling. As we bid adieu to the world of Manderley and the enigmatic tale woven within the frames of the 1940 classic, Rebecca, let the echoes of its haunting beauty linger in the corridors of your imagination. The allure of secrets veiled in whispers, the dance of shadows upon grand staircases, and the palpable tension in the air, these are the threads that bind us to this cinematic masterpiece. As you reflect on your journey through the labyrinth of emotions that Rebecca undoubtedly stirred, consider the chapters it added to your personal narrative. Did you find a fragment of yourself in the labyrinthine mysteries of Manderley, or perhaps glimpse a reflection of your own desires and fears in the characters that inhabit its halls? Movies, after all, are not just stories told on celluloid. They are mirrors reflecting the myriad facets of our own souls. Now, dear viewer, the stage is yours. Share the fragments of Rebecca that reside within you. Whether it be a scene that left an indelible mark or a character whose complexity resonated with your own, let the words flow like ink on parchment. Your thoughts are the annotations in the margins of this timeless tale, connecting us across the years. In this shared space of reflection, let the dialogue flourish. Engage with your fellow travelers through time and narrative. For in these conversations, we breathe new life into the enduring legacy of Rebecca. Your words, your memories, and your insights become the invisible threads that weave the fabric of our collective cinematic experience. Thank you for taking this voyage with us, for allowing the magic of Rebecca to unfold in your hearts and minds. Your time and thoughts are cherished gems in the treasure trove of shared storytelling, 
Until our paths cross again in the realms of other tales, remember the magic of Rebecca lives on in the stories we tell and the connections we forge. Authentically yours in the tapestry of tales.